Well, good morning and thank you for coming in and helping us celebrate a day that has been, some would argue, almost 10 years in the making and some would argue almost 25 to 30 years in the making. This town started to talk about what to do with this town hall back in the late 80s. And it fell by the wayside. And as everybody remembers, or many of you will remember, we started again in about 2009 to figure out what was going to go on with this town hall, to make sure that our town had administrative offices that were handicap accessible, and that, God forbid, we were actually compliant with the ADA. It was a trip that we've taken where we've shown what can happen when a community comes together. Back in 2009, I believe I was, I know I was on the board, I don't know whether I was the board chair or not, but in 2009, we got together with the building committee, resurrected the building committee, and said, we have to do this as a community or else we can't do it. And at one point, this building did a pretty good job of tearing apart the town. But the fabric of Waitley came out, and we demonstrated that as easy as it is to pull a town apart because we should all have our varied opinions, a town like Waitley can bring things back together. And working together, we accomplished this. Yay. I don't know whether everybody knows me, but my name is Jonathan Edwards. I am the, the chair of the Waitley Select Board, and I have been honored to be a part of this process, less so over the last few years, uh, but I've been honored to be a part of it, and I've been honored to work with all of you for so long, uh, and, and you are all considered my friends and friends of the entire Select Board. What we're gonna do is have a quick ceremony but I want to make sure that we acknowledge some of the people who have been absolutely pivotal to making this a success. Uh, and if, if you go inside, there's some, there's some blood and a lot of sweat equity on the walls of, of this building. And so the people I'm going to acknowledge and the groups I'm going to acknowledge, really think about them as you walk through this building and think about what they've given to this town as part of making this a reality. Uh, because they deserve your thanks. So, I will first mention former and current members of the Municipal Building Committee. Fred Orlowski, Virginia Alice, Adelia Bardwell, Anita Husted, Darcy Tozier, Jonathan Edwards, Paul Newland, Dan Kennedy, Judy Marklin, Ed Sklepowitz, John Robleski, and J.D. Ross. And I apologize if we've missed anybody. Before I go to the next group, I do want to add a couple people who they're not or they haven't been members of this committee, but boy, have they done a lot for this building. Um, the first one is Melissa Caldwell. And the second one and, and his blood and sweat and hard work is all over inside and outside of this is uh, Paul Florial. And to put in a bug for volunteerism, even though you're not on a committee, boy, can you add a lot to a town by your hard work and dedication like Paul does. Members of the Historical Commission, Donna Wiley, Judy Marklin, Darcy Tozier, Susan Barron, Alan McArdle, and Howard Nanner. <laughs> Members of the Community Preservation Committee, Alan Sanderson Jr., John Devine, Judy Marklin, Donna Wiley, some of these names you're going to hear repeatedly, by the way. Andrew Ostrowski and Catherine Walkowitz. And, and by the way, those three committees are really what made it happen. The ones I'm going to mention are important, but they pale in comparison to what those three, what the members of those three organizations did. The former and current members of the select board, Jonathan Edwards, Joyce Palmer Fortune, Fred Orlowski and Paul Newland. If I have my dates right, that would be the list, and I apologize to any of my former colleagues who feel slighted, but I think that's probably it. Former and current town administrators and staff, and don't think for a second that this could have happened without these people. Lynn Sibley, Mark Pruhensky, former town administrator, Brian Domina, Mary Ellen Cranston, Janet Scully, and Amy Schrader. I want to acknowledge 
some people who when we called, they were there. And they weren't here every day, but boy, were they important to this process. Uh, State Representative Steve Kulik, who could not attend today. Former Senator Stanley Rosenberg, who could not attend today. Their staff, uh, Mary Jane Bacon, and, uh, and someone who literally would call back within minutes sometimes, um, the late and very missed Paul Dumphy. People are going to scratch their heads on this one. For those of you who haven't, who haven't followed this as closely, Jim Barry from the Department of Energy Resources, wow. This building wouldn't happen without the energy efficiency and, and the work that uh, DER put into this building and helped us make, make sure that it was energy efficient and that our tax dollars really didn't get totally drained because it's about as efficient a building as you can possibly get, and we're very proud of that. <laughs> Massachusetts Historical Commission, Paul Holtz. Uh, private uh, contributors to this, Jones, Witts, and Architects, who have been phenomenal for almost a decade now working with us. <laughs> Members of the staff of the, of the architecture firm, George Dole, Christian Witsit, and Margo Jones. Two of the three are here, I know. I don't know whether Christian is here or not, but I know that Margo and George are here. <laughs> and then Westfield Construction, who have done a phenomenal job on this building. Finally, to close the loop on the community piece of this, I mentioned the members of the Waitley Historical Society and friends at Town Hall, and I also want to just mention private citizens and local businesses whose contributions have made this, again, possible. I know I'm, I'm, I'm repeating myself. I believe Don is going to talk about it, but I'll tell you, the generosity of this town is unmatched, and your names aren't going to be listed individually, but I'm telling you, you should all consider yourselves poster children for making this happen and what it takes when people really care. So I want to thank you very much. And with that, I believe I am going to stop talking, much to everyone's pleasure. And I am going to pass this off to my friend Donna Wiley. Yeah. <laughs> Morning. Can everyone hear me? Is it okay? Uh, all right. How's that? Well, I have some things to say on behalf of the Historical Commission, but I'd like to start with a very brief personal note. Um, most of you have lived here for decades, and some of you have lived here for your whole lives. Sorry. But um, I, I wanted to say that when Neil and I, right into when Neil and I moved here, when we were looking for a house in May of 2009, we were driving all over the valley. I had seen a house in Waitley on the website on the web. Our real estate agent hadn't found it, and it was the end of a long day. And I remember that we drove up Christian Lane and around the bend, and we drove past this building. And it looked pretty terrible, you know, those funny, quirky little sky blue shutters and the peeling paint and the broken windows. And we stopped and we thought, that looks pretty interesting. And here we are. So it means a lot to me. And now I'm going to give you the serious stuff. Um, one of the things that um, I wanted to do is give you just a little bit about the history of Town Hall, and I know that many, of, oh there we are, I know that many of you know more than I do about it. The building was designed in 1844 by uh, an important architect from Northampton, Isaac Damon, who designed the Congregational Church down the street at the same time, and they are the same design. Both were built as one-story buildings. About 25 years later, each of them were raised. So each of, in each case, the current second floor was the ground floor. Town Hall was uh, lifted up in 1871. Over the years, Town Hall has served Waitley in many ways. It's been the town's central meeting place, the library, the high school, the location of town offices, and of course, a place for performances, ex exhibits, and celebrations. But the last 
30 years or so have been less positive. Um, starting when the elementary school uh, was built, we, the town was no longer able, of course, to have its meetings in this building, which was not accessible. And then we shuttered it entirely in 2015. So what has the Historical Commission been up to? Um, you should know, if you don't, that this building, Town Hall, is what is called a defining structure in this National Historic District. And our responsibility as your Historical Commission has been to ensure that this renovation be conducted according to the U.S. Secretary of Interior Standards for Historic Preservation. And we did that very seriously. But at the same time, none of us thought that we should be creating a museum piece that was shuttered up. And we very much were committed to working with our partners on the Municipal Building Committee to achieve the goals of energy efficiency, accessibility, and usefulness. And I figure we probably spent about 140 hours meeting together. Fred may know the exact amount, but it was, it was a lot of hours. So we, the Historical Commission, identified um, in 2013, I found the first letter that we sent, um, the components of the building that were most important in terms of historic preservation. The slate roof, the two original chimneys, the interior wood flooring, trim and wainscoting, and the wonderful large 19th century windows that you see behind me. And I'm very happy that they have all been preserved. We also identified a number of 20th century elements that, although they weren't original, we all agreed contributed to the character of the town hall. And I'm going to list them quickly and suggest that you look for them as you walk through the building. Um, they included the front portico behind me, um, which has been made slightly larger, a set of beautiful original schoolhouse lights, which are now in the um, Virginia Alice community room, the exposed wooden beams on the first floor, wrought iron chandeliers in these two stairwells and in the auditorium, and the tin ceilings and walls of the stage. We also decided to keep the town's fabulous 1891 safe, which was made for Waitley by a firm called McNeil and Urban in Hamilton, Ohio, we actually bought it from E.S. E.C. Morrison Company of Boston, and these were the best vendors that could be had. So the safe is now tucked right in here under the left-hand stairwell, and we have it tied open so that you can see the interior stair, um, the interior hand-painted landscapes. And I don't know what the prize would be, but it would be great if somebody could help us identify the landscapes because we haven't yet figured out what exactly is depicted, um, and we're hoping to have the safe restored properly before long. One more note about the building. When you walk through the small addition at the back, you may think, oh, this doesn't look right. It doesn't look historic. So you ought to know that the standards for historic preservation say that we shouldn't mimic the historic part of the building when we're putting an addition on it. We ought to do something that's complementary. Jones Whitsitt recommended to us a style, a modern style, mid-century modern, and we all approved it. So that is intentionally different, and I hope you like it too. So please enjoy the building. It's been a lot of fun, and we hope it'll be used all the time, because it's just great. Thanks. Um, Judy Markland is now going to take you through um, a description of how we came up with the money. <laughs> Good morning. You can hear me. Good. I'm Judy Markland. Um, I'm among other committees on the CPC and the Friends of Town Hall, both of which were very much involved with funding this, and I guess that's why I'm here. You know, when you're young, your parents tell you about the magic words, please and thank you. And having been on the please side of the funding battle for far too many years, I can tell you it's a lot nicer to get up here on the thank you side. <laughs> it really feels good. And there is a lot to be thankful for. The support for this building throughout the town and the valley, actually, has just been phenomenal. And, and I think the results show it, but 
but we're really all very, very grateful. Overall, $1.58 million was raised. That's, that's a lot. Paul, you, you fixed this too well. The town itself invested $417,000. 330,000 of that came from the cell tower capital reserve, another 86,000 from town capital funds. I was there at the town meetings when that money was approved. It was approved with huge positive margins. And, and again, we thank you, town of Whateley. Jonathan mentioned two state grants that we got. This state believes both in energy efficiency and in historic preservation. We were lucky enough, well, I shouldn't say it was luck, it was hard work, but we got $234,000 in grants. The Green Communities Grant, the sign here, was for 164,000, and that paid for the bulk of the heating, air conditioning, to get the lights redone as LED efficient insulation, helping make this building energy efficient. And so to the Department of Energy Resources, Energy, we're, we're very grateful. We knew we had to preserve the windows and the roof for to be eligible for CPA money. It obviously is expensive to work on these things. It's expensive to get new stuff too, of course. We got a basically $70,000 from the Massachusetts Historical Commission, which funded half of the cost of the window restoration, half the repairs on the roof, and the repairs on the chimney. And I hope you go in and when you see the windows, just admire them. They were all taken out, refitted, the original frames restored, the original glass put back, and they look wonderful. We have nice, tight, new exterior storms that were covered in this grant, too. So for that, we're also grateful. Now, you've heard a lot about the CPA funds. Um, this town is very fortunate to have CPA money. It works for historic preservation, open space, community housing, and recreation. I'm on the CPC, I can tell you, I think there are at least four votes, maybe more. The CPC was totally supportive of this project, they never questioned it once, and they and the town voted $757,000. Now, of the roughly 400000 that's already been spent, the state has provided half of that. For the next $350,000, we're, we're paying off borrowing, we're paying the principal and interest on borrowing. We hope that the state will again pay something between, say, roughly 40% of that. So, roughly $700,000 thousand dollars I think the state is going to pick up about 45 percent of it so so that's that's another way to thank the Commonwealth of Massachusetts what I think you probably haven't heard as much about is about the private donations we've been just extraordinarily fortunate um, we, as Jonathan mentioned, we had contributions, in-kind contributions from all sorts of people, including uh, Smith and Amherst colleges that gave audiovisual equipment. That's much appreciated. Friends of Town Hall is me, uh, Adelia Bardwell, Anita Houston, Paul Floreal, and Donna Wiley. We tried to get private donations. And it wasn't all that hard, actually. People were very willing to contribute. We had a raffle. I can't tell you, we were flabbergasted. So many businesses and 
individuals gave raffle prizes, and then you all turned out and bought three times more raffle tickets than we, we ever expected to sell. We had a concert. I want to thank Paul Newland for letting me pretend to produce the concert while he did all the hard work and found the band and produced the microphone and did everything that needed to be done. Um, we had wonderful sponsorships from all sorts of businesses. We sold 140 tickets, which was again about a third more than we had possibly hoped to get. Uh, those two events together raised $10,000, which I was flabbergasted. The total, but, but beyond that, people gave. People contributed. We had gifts ranging from $5 to $15,000. We had gifts from all over Waitley, West Waitley, East Waitley. We had gifts from Florida, Ohio, Maryland, Vermont. Um, we had gifts from people who've never set foot in Waitley because they knew it was important to a friend of theirs or a relative here. And the total amount of money that was raised by Friends of Town Hall was $175,000. And and I don't know how to say thank you for that. I just don't. So this really is a community building. And I just wanted to read you something from the original townhouse. It was first called the townhouse. This is from the 1843 townhouse building committee report. You'll be pleased to know they had committees in 1843 too. It is expedient that whenever the town shall build a house for their use, that they build one that they will ever after be satisfied with. And I think we've done that. Thank you. Uh, I'm Fred Orlowski, Chairman of the Municipal Building Committee, also a select board member. Uh, I've been involved in this project since, I think, 2011 on the committee and, and chair for the last uh, about two years. And what we've heard so far is, is about all the community support, fundraising, and committees that have been involved in, uh, in this project. Uh, I'd like to thank some of the uh, people that were involved hands-on in the renovation of this building for the last eight months. Uh, for one, our highway department, Keith, I think Keith is here somewhere. He helped quite a bit on uh, the septic system there. He did some drainage work, curb work in the front of the building. That was all part of, of his activity to, to support the project. We had the water department and water district involved in putting a new connection to the building. Uh, Wayne Hakoski and Nicholas Jones put a new connection in the front of the building. That was not part of the project, but they volunteered their, their time to do that. Uh, our fire chief got involved in reviewing the, the fire alarm system, making sure we had enough uh, smoke detectors in every room that's in, in MET code. The historic commission involved not only in uh, the fundraising, but there was a chair cleaning exercise, I'm gonna call it that, about two weeks ago, uh, moving the old furniture back. We thought it was very good to clean it before we moved it. It probably has never been cleaned for 20, 30, 40 years. So it's all new clean furniture in there, the chairs, tables, whatever. The Historic Society organized that. They were also involved in picking out some of the colors inside the building for the walls and for the carpeting. And the Grange also was involved. Some of their stuff has been moved into the building as well. There's, there's one person that you may not know about that's, gonna, that's been involved, especially this week, all his effort, all his time to make sure the building was ready. All the little details, the little nuances in there. And, and this person is gonna continue helping, continue monitoring the town building to make sure it's secure and it's taken care of. He's a neighbor in town. Uh, I think he's here. Neil, Neil Abrams. 
Could, uh, Neil, could you stand to raise your hand? Neil, okay, Neil is back there. We very much appreciate what Neil has been doing this past week, and he's all volunteered to be our, we call a neighborhood watchdog or monitor or whatever uh, for the future of this building to make sure it's, it's kept as pristine, clean, and crisp like it is today. So again, thank you, Neil. I also like to thank the, the four people that have been meeting for the last eight months to deal with the contractor, to deal with the architect. Uh, we've been meeting every two weeks for the last uh, for the last nine months, which turns out to be about 19 or 20 meetings. Uh, George Dole from the Jones Whitset Architect Firm. George is is here. Raise your hand. There's George. George Dole, uh, our contractor. Westfield Construction out of New Hampshire, one of their representatives, uh, Joey Looney, is here, Joey, raise your, raise your hand, okay. Uh, the, other, the other two members are Brian, Brian Domino, our town administrator, was involved in making sure the, the payments and invoices and everything were submitted properly, and of course I was involved as well, uh, and all in the, looking at the engineering and design considerations that, that needed to be done. The one thing we never, we never did get, we tried to get our town administrator up on the lift to look at the chimneys. The chimneys were, were supposedly renovated, uh, the flashing restored and, and the cement thing. We tried to get Brian up there on a chairlift, but we weren't very successful. <laughs> Okay, this was an eighth month, eighth month contract to, to renovate this building. It was basically completed in, in June. There's some minor, minor details to be, to be ironed out yet, punch list items. Uh, the contractor was here every day, weekday, even on Saturdays. When we had minus 15, 20 degree temperatures, they were here. The contractor was here doing, doing the work to keep on schedule. And they did keep on schedule and complete it according to, according to the plan. So we really appreciate their, their efforts and all the subs that worked on it. Some challenges we had while we were doing this for eight months, we had to maintain parking, uh, parking lot here for the, the post office and the Smike's house, uh, maintain access to the, uh, to the post office boxes, to the delivery of the post office, uh, that was a challenge at some time. Uh, we also had to deal with wildlife. I don't know how many of you know, there's wildlife in the area, in the center of town. We had uh, some concern of kestrel falcons wanting to nest inside the building on the, on the backside. Uh, luckily, they didn't create nests, but we got rid of them. And the other one was black bears walking through, walking through the parking lot, through the through the material list, there was black bears here in the center of town. I don't know how many residents that live close by uh, can vouch for that, that they see them here. Okay, I think Donna talked mostly about the, some of the features of the, of the building, the highlights of, the, of the, the renovation. A few things, I won't list everything that she went through, but I think she, a few things she missed that I think are important is uh, all the wood floors have been maintained. We didn't replace any floors other than where we had to. They've been refinished and, and the character markings, you'll notice wood burnings, holes and whatever in the floor, that's all original to the building. So that's still in there. The safe that was moved on the, inside the front door, you'll notice that was actually a proposal on the plan when this building was renovated in 1971. The last time it was, that was the plan to put that safe there. We saw that on the plan and everybody thought it was a good idea let's continue, let's keep that safe in the building. Uh, we also kept the vault here. Uh, I guess I challenge you to go find out where the vault is. It's not real obvious, so see if you can find a vault, it's in there. Unique features, I think Donna mentioned uh, exposed ceiling beams, the handicap lift and the second staircase in the back. We have ADA bathrooms. We also have an automated fire alarm system. So if any of the smoke detectors go off, it go, the signal goes to a control center, they will automatically 
inform our fire department and other people that there is an incident here. Before, it was, there wasn't any fire alarm system. So now we're, we're proud to have that. In closing, uh, many of you read in the, in the newspapers, I've been involved, well, I'm a native of the town here. I've been involved in this building since 1970, uh, in the early, in the remodeling then back in, in 70, 71, and also participating in town meetings that were here in the early 80s. Uh, and now 50 years later, I guess I'm still involved. I guess I, I'm proud to be a resident and proud to be involved in, in the renovation of this building again. Uh, and hopefully this will be our continue for another 50 years. I won't be involved in, but uh, I think it's a, it's a good effort. Uh, it's a good effort for me to come back and, and help in this remodeling. And our plan is to have future town meetings and community activities in this building. That's, that's we're going to bring it back to where it was uh, not quite 50 years ago, but 20, 30 years ago when there was activities in here. Uh, and one final note, this is what, one thing I keep bringing up and, and I, I think it's finally caught on. This is gonna be our showcase building for our 250th anniversary celebration coming up in 2021. We've got a building that's completely remodeled like it was in 1971. Now we have something that we can be proud of, that we can celebrate all of our activities for our anniversary for the 250th. So keep that date in mind, and I'm sure many of you are gonna be involved in in activities, which some will be celebrated at this building and other locations around town. That's less than, less than three years away. We will be celebrating the anniversary of the town, the 250th. And finally, I thank everybody that's here, all the committees, I don't know if we, missed anybody we're, we're sorry if we missed your name but uh i think it's it's a great community effort and i appreciate all, all you showing up today and all your support throughout the years okay now I do, we'll do the uh, the ribbon cutting and i'd like to call uh, well we have some of the speakers here on the ribbon cutting and anybody from the municipal building committee that would like to participate in the ribbon cutting, please come forward. All right, on three, what do we say? You can get in here. Come on, Paul. Come on, Paul. Adelia. Serious, Anita. Oh, you're gonna hear it from me. All right. Come in here, Paul. Let's just do it. All right, ready? One, two, three. One, two, three.